he it was people say now this this I uh, I want to get out there tonight. People say, well, the Holy Spirit was not here till Christ went back. When God was here, when Christ walked this land, the Holy Spirit was here. Amen. Because the Trinity is God. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit, look, look at verse 8 in clarity. Let it talk to you. Let it speak to you. And he said, uh, verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 12, I meant to say, but he said, I am the light of the world. All right. Then he said, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You can't follow God without the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Now, people can say, well, and they might be different, and I'm sure they are, but you can believe anything you want to believe, but believe this book if you want to go to heaven. Amen. That's uh, that, the long and the short of it. But let's drop down to, uh, we talked about the new life will come, and we talked about it, uh, about First Thessalonians over there in chapter number 4, and the thing about down in verse number 16, and it simply said there, if uh, we would take and get this thing and get everything right, he said we could, he was coming after us. Because I read this, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. All right. So God himself is coming back simply, I think, because he said, I'm no respect of person. And he didn't come after Stephen, but he sure stood up and welcomed him home. Amen. And that's exactly what was happening there. The Holy Spirit of God had come at that time. And, uh, and God himself had filled Stephen and the book of God says so. You don't have to take my word for it. Just read your book. And it said he was filled. He was full of the Holy Spirit of God. He, he was God's deacon. Amen. That's all you can say about him. And brother, there's no way around it because he, before he even died, he looked up and he said, don't even lay this charge to these people. Don't, don't do a thing to them, Lord. Just save them. I believe what was on his heart. He wanted them to go to heaven, but he didn't enjoy being stoned. And what did Christ say? Christ said he endured the cross. Amen. He endured it. He endured it, but he said despising the shame. He despised the shame that was put before him. He hung there just as naked. At, I don't know. I'll just put naked as a jaybird, and I've never seen a jaybird naked. But the thing about it is he didn't have no clothing on him. He was beaten raw. And he said, I despise the shame, but I'm seeing the joy that's before me. Amen. Joy, weeping endures for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. All right. Now, point number three. But what the law could not do, Jesus did. The law stopped. The law had to, had to find a place to where it could not go. And it was when man sinned. The law is perfect. 
If you're guilty of one thing, the Word of God says, if you're guilty of a little, you're guilty of it all. You've, you, God's law didn't want, he never once said in this book that we had to keep all of the law. But he told them before us that, that you, he, he put the law out there. The law didn't come right, right at the first. When Adam, I, how, do you know how many years it was later? I, I don't know right offhand, but uh, I've got it down somewhere. But the thing about it is, they were several hundred, they were a lot of years come before the law ever came. And when the law came, we found out that, boy, we were sinners. Amen. We could not keep the law. But just the Ten Commandments. We we broke them. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. But it, how 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 can you not look at that and just say I've done every one of those exactly like God wrote them? Then hey, you broke the first and you've lied. <laughs> But, buddy, the thing about it, and I don't believe they're a liar up there, but the thing, yeah, by our false witness, said don't covet. Brother, i tell you how to not covet. When you go out there and you look at Brother Jake's Jeep, say, I would love to have one like that, and I wish he had a better one. Amen. Now, that's not coveting. But I go out there and I say, I want one. Boy, I'd love to have his Jeep. You've coveted and you broke the ten, you broke the commandment of God. Right then. All right. But number three, then in first Corinthians chapter three, if you find your place there, just let me read just a verse or two to you. In verse 11 down through verse number 17. But he said here, for other foundation can no man lay than is laid, which is in Jesus Christ. For if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire he shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abideth which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet as by fire. Verse number 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Notice where the Holy Spirit of God is dwelling and where the Holy Spirit of God abides and lives. Ye are the temple of God. All right. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. See the Holy Spirit of God? He has set up a residence. All right, verse number 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You are the temple of God. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is a sin. Anything you do to defile this temple. All right, but let's go on just a little bit farther. Look in 2 Corinthians. Turn over there in 2 Corinthians 3 and look what the Word of God is telling us. He said here that 
It is, he is real. He is forever real. The law could not do what Jesus did. In 2 Corinthians 3, look in verse number 3. He said, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink. Boy, let this settle in but with the Spirit of the living God. Now, He's a living God. It is alive, He said, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables now of the heart. This is where God is dwelling in you. All right, verse 4. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Now, look at the next one. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our efficiency is of God. He was telling them, hey, you are, you are a God person if you're saved. You're under the leadership and the direction of the Holy Spirit if you don't defile it. Now, what did he say back in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3? Before 1 Corinthians, he said, hey, wood stubble. All of that will burn up. If you got rewards and you've done great things in your eyes in this walk of life and you just walk around and say, hey, boy, I'm, I'm just done a super job. Boy, I thank God. How about giving God glory for it? Give God the glory. You can, you can do, I, I'll make a point. I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to do it. I told Brother Michael, I'm getting ready to plant some turnip greens. And I said, he said, boy, Jake loves them things. I said, I'm going to get him a hemp sack full, take them up to his house. I'm going to lay them at his door, but I ain't knocking on the door, ain't doing a thing. I'm just leaving. <laughs> but I, he'll know Maybe he'll give God praise, I hope, that and eat turnips all winter long. Now that right there, but I said, knock on not knocking on the door, I didn't grow the turnips. I threw the seed in the ground, and the seed was fed looked after and watered and watched upon by God Almighty. He grew the turnips. He grew whatever. Hey, he grew us. We're still growing. I am. Boy, every day I pick up the book. Boy, I find out how ignorant I am. But let's just go a little bit further. We've got to get through this. But the thing about it is, in, in uh, Hebrews, in chapter 10, uh, there's, uh, I know some of you ain't going to like this, but I've got to jump around a little bit here. Uh, okay, in chapter 10, and in verse, I want, I want to look at some different verses here. It, uh, number one, Look here, for the law, now this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the, that the law could not do what Jesus did. The Holy Spirit has to do this. But he said, for the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not every, not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers therefore thereunto perfect. Does that make sense? It does to me. 
for the simple reason is the law couldn't save me. But when I come to God, he got the job done. All right. For then, verse number two, for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscious of sins. You get that? But the law couldn't show me all my sin, but the Holy Spirit of God can. Boy, I tell you, it showed it up. Now look in verse number 10 of chapter 10 of Hebrews. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now, boy, you can't be saved but one time. You're either saved or you miss the mark. Now, that's, that's just it. Look at the next verse, verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices which can never, 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 never. Now, look what it says. It could never, never, ever take sin out of your life. It couldn't do it. It couldn't do it. It said, which can never take away. And look, it's sins is plural. That's more than one. Hey, you're not just going to sin one time. Paul said, I sin daily. We sin and come short of the glory of God every day of our life. Not meaning to. There's a sin of commission and there's the sin of omission. We let a lot of things fall that we could do that should never have failed. How many times, how many people walk by you today are you talked to or talked about? You either done one of the two one of the two, Book of James will tell you about that little booger. Boy, he'll get you in trouble, Jake. Oh, one time it's not that it's in a man that defileth him, but that which cometh out. Boy, you got to be careful what runs around that little old tongue. That little old fella can dig a hole that you can't fill up in the rest of your life. They can get you in trouble. One time it goes out, you can't take it back. It's either been a help or it's done the damage. Think about it. You can cross the road or you can stand on this side. <laughs> I'd rather stay on the side I'm on. All right, but let's go just a little bit farther on. Let's go back to Second Corinthians chapter nine. I know, Dana, I wish you'd make your mind up. All right, Second Corinthians in chapter number nine, we find some things, some things that is so real, and it's 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 real. Look in verse eight. I'm going to hurry through this. He said, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Now look what God said. Hey, I'm able to give you all the grace that's in heaven. And God told Paul, he said, there's grace for every need. And boy, I'll tell you what, I sure need his grace. Right now, I need it. But he said, God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always have in all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. God will bring out the good work through the Holy Spirit of God in everything you do that's pertaining to him. Amen. Now, boy, that it don't get no better than that. Whoo, glory. Hallelujah. Makes my old beast sting better. 
All right. But the thing about it is, it's, it's got to be, we've got to do it. First Peter chapter three and verse 18. Look what he says. Delaney, we'll get them all together right a while. But the thing about it is, in First Peter, in chapter 3, look down in verse number 18. What is he telling us here? He said, Now, for Christ also hath once suffered for sins. Once. That's Christ now. Christ now. All right. Now, look, look what he's saying. He said, The just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death, in the flesh, but now listen to what it says, but quickened by the Spirit. The Spirit of God is what brings you to God through through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ had to die in order for him to send the Holy Spirit of God here to live and to do the work that he, he did his work People down here, they call it retiring. I find out that I know, I know so little about this book. So little. And God is so awesome. Amen. I read a paper today. I found it. Been there since 1988. And, uh, it's a part of the sword of the Lord, but it's a tribute to the Jews. And I was looking at that and looking at the fellow and Dr. Tim Lee. I don't know if any of you know him or not, ever heard of him. I'll bring a picture of him, show it to you. He's had both legs are gone. They were gone. God had, he said, Dean, he said, I'll tell you something. Well, wait a minute. He didn't call me Dean. He said, Pastor Adams. That's why he, he wrote on the back of the picture. Some, but anyway, that's not important. But the thing about it is, he said, it took God to take my legs to get to my heart. And boy, could that man preach in a wheelchair. I've, I've heard him different times. He lives in Garland, Texas. But the thing about it is, what does God have to take to get the Holy Spirit really humping in your life? Sometimes God has to... The, look in chapter 3 and verse 12. What does he say in First Peter now? He said, for the eyes of the Lord are all over the righteous. Oh, God, you can't go nowhere that God don't see you. And he said, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Thank God for that. And But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. God said, boy, them that do evil, I won't even look at them. You say, wait a minute now. That, he just said that over here, but he'd give us our grace. But God said in Isaiah 59, verse 1 and verse 2, but your sin and your iniquity have separated you from your God. Now that's in, that's, I, I know it's Old Testament, Folks out there are listening tonight, they may say, well, the Old Testament don't apply. Well, the devil has sure shot you a lie. Amen. This book is very much in force, and it's in force by God Almighty from Genesis to Revelation. And the cover of it is holy because he is a holy God and he permitted this book to be written by through the Holy Spirit of God. And that's what we're talking about now. Cause God, God is, God is powerful. All right. You really want to go back to Hebrews again? Help yourself. All right. 
We're going to look in Hebrews in chapter number 9 and verse 8. Verse 9, chapter 9 and verse number 8. And look, look what he said here. The Holy Ghost. Now, he said the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into holiness of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. So Christ, now I'm not going to dwell on this for the simple reason is this. What he said here finalizes it. But what I, I titled this third uh, uh, sequence about was simply was it took the Holy Spirit of God to get you to where you are. You're, you're not going through no other way and you cannot go through the law. Because the Word of God, and I just read it to you, the law couldn't do what Christ did. Amen. You know what He did? He kept every bit of it. You couldn't keep the law. The law couldn't keep you. Look at it both ways. You can shut a door or you can close a door. You can slam a door or you can just beat that door off the hand, but it's still a door. The law was the law until it was taken out of the way. And then Christ said, I am the door. And if you'll open it, I'll come in. And me and you will have supper. All right, but let's go on. Number five. Number verse, I mean, uh, number four. The Spirit will make us to rejoice. And how does He do it? In God's promises. That's how He does it. That does it. And how does He do it? Second Peter chapter number one and verse four. That, that is, that is one of my, I love, I love this. I love this. In chapter 1 and verse number 4 of 1 Peter, he said, to an inheritance. Boy, I'll tell you. People, you know, you'll see in-laws and outlaws that you ain't seen in 40 years when so-and-so dies and they're getting ready to read his will. Boy, they'll come out of woodwork. What did he leave me? I'll tell you what he left me. He left the Holy Spirit. He said here, now he said to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. You're, as what, it, what is he doing? The Spirit of God will make us to rejoice and have a wonderful time in the Lord if we just turn loose and don't look at everybody around you. Just look to God. Amen. Boy, that, that's... What chapter and verse did you say there, Lice? It was chapter, uh, First Peter chapter 3. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I'll tell you right now, it's, it'll make us, re no, I said Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. Yeah, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4 was the last one. But the thing about it is, you know, because He sealed us. Amen. You're sealed. 1 Corinthians in chapter 1, or 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22. I'm narrowing this thing down now. Chapter 1, now look, look what it says in verse number 22. Oh, hallelujah. Yay. 
I see. Well, it's Second Peter, First Peter. Okay, okay. Hallelujah. Straighten me out there, Merle. Who hath also in First Second Corinthians in chapter number one and verse twenty-two? Who hath also sealed us? Who has sealed us? The Holy Spirit of God. I mean, boy, it'll make you rejoice. He said, and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. The earnest, when you, when you go to buy a piece of land or buy a piece of property, most time they ask you for some earnest money. Put down $500 or $5,000, whatever the amount. You, you know what that earnest money is for? To make sure that you're going to show up when this thing, when it really comes down to either getting or not getting. I don't know how to put it any other way. But the thing about it is, God put the earnest money in. He paid the price. And all we got to do is move in through the Holy Spirit of God. See, I don't have to put no earnest money down. He did that. Amen. Glory to God. All right. The Holy Spirit of God will make us to rejoice. We can't. We can't help, but I can't help to get excited about going to heaven. Now, you say you want to die? No, I don't want to die. I want to live as long as God will let me live and be healthy. And I know, Gene, but I want to be in the mind that I've got if I can keep it. She said, well, I'm hoping it'll get better. <laughs> She's waited all these years and it ain't improved none yet. <laughs> but the thing about it is, seriously, when the Holy Spirit of God comes into you, there is something different about you. There's going to be a difference. And the thing is, we have got it. In John 14, see, you don't have to go far. All right. John chapter 14. Let's look in verse number 26. And, and I, I kind of like this. And he said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you. See, he's going to change your mind. He's going to change your thought pattern. He's going to put you in the right gear. That thing sitting out front is straight drive. It's got six gears. Have you ever missed one, Dean? Oh, boy. Yes. But here, listen, I've never missed a gear in finding out where the Lord's at. Every time I mess up, he say, uh-oh, you didn't mash clutch in. Yeah, see, you got to straighten up, mate. You got to, you got to be, all right? But look what he said here. And this thing is so real in verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. God, this book, he said, is all of this book. God said what I've talked to you about. I'm going to bring it to remembrance. You're going to get it remembered, if, but you got to get it the first time first. Then you can remember it. I can't remember something that I don't know nothing about. And boy, I'm getting so now my memory went on vacation and forgot to come home. It's gone. I figured she'd say amen. But anyway, 
couple of more things. In John 15, look what he says in verse number 26. John 15. Now, he said here in this passage of Scripture, and I'm winding down, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, that tells me God is no lie. Amen. God is not a fake. The Holy Spirit of God don't play games. And when you're wrong, if you're saved, the Spirit of God will show you and tell you you're wrong, and it's up to you to get straightened out. Amen. Now, God's not going to take you to the cross. The only one man went to that cross, and he is a God-man. Amen. But he said, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. And when the Holy Spirit of God tells you you're wrong, or you're making a mistake, or you're doing something, or you're about to get into something, listen to him. Amen. Listen to him. And the Holy Spirit of God in John chapter 16. You're right there at the door. And look what he says. And here he is fulfilling his role. But he said in John in chapter 16, look down in verse number 7 and 8. One more reference and I'm through. But he said, here, if I can find it, and at that day ye shall ask in my name, and I shall say unto you that I will pray the Father for you. Boy, ain't that something? For the Father himself loveth you. Boy, we can rejoice on that all the way to glory. For the Father loveth you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. Ain't that something? Ain't that so sweet? God gave his only son. He came out from God, left all of heaven, left everything in glory, and come here just for me, just for you. John chapter 16, look down at verse number 13. Look what he said. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. Folks, the Holy Spirit of God is real. It is the very reason you're here tonight. It's up to you and up to me if we will just shout it out. Donna, come out of that hole back there and shout it out. But if she's the only a man I've got. <laughs> Brother, I'll tell you, I don't know what's in that room back there, but I want a dose of it. <laughs> Brother, let's stand. Question, anybody, comment. I'm glad I got it. I'm just glad I got it. And I can't let go because I'm not holding on. He is. He is holding on to me. Heavenly Father, and Almighty God tonight, Lord, as we leave here, we'll leave, Lord, knowing 
that you love us. Lord, knowing that I'm yours and you're mine, God, go home with me. Keep me. Watch over me, Lord. And when I fail, and Lord, I do so often, God, just help me get up, brush off, repent, and don't go that way again. God, just help me, Lord, to live for you. Lord, I soon this old boy's coming home. And Lord, when I do, I'd sure love to hear, well done. Oh, dear God, I'd love to have a crown. Oh, God, I'd love to have a crown to lay at your feet. Oh, because, oh, dear God, you're the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of all glory. Whoa, glory, hallelujah. Oh, praise your holy name tonight. God, thank you for saving me. Oh, thank you for my wife and my children. Thank you for my church. But Lord, it's not really mine, but God, you're letting me enjoy it. Lord, it's your church. But Lord, I'm glad I'm part of it. In Jesus' name, amen.